Welcome to Extract Talks, guys. I appreciate you guys being here. We got Jared, and myself, Dr. John. We're we're gonna be talking over the next, I don't know, maybe seven or eight weeks. Yeah. About the extremely boring topic of GMP. No, it's not boring. Oh, it's very it's boring. It, it's boring. It's very important to know it if you is, wanna be is, successful it really in this is. industry. So, the reason I say it's boring is because when you look at all the like search traffic and stuff like that, a, a lot of times you'll find out that people are not, this is not what people are looking for. They're yeah. looking for diamonds and sauce. <laughs> they're, they're, yeah. look, they're looking Weird. for the latest techniques. How to make uh, cannabis oil from how, trim. How to make cannabis oil from trim. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's a good one. How to, you know, how to lighten the colors of their yep. extracts. We get that, we get a lot of search terms for carbon X, <laughs> yeah. but GMP. But it's important. It's, I mean, it's important. again, it separates uh, the professionals from just the people that are in it. To, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So anyway, yeah, we have been involved very heavily with GMP producers, GPP producers, yep. or good production practice uh, practices, which is in, in Canada, mm -hmm. GMP, which is in the U.S. and the rest of the world, which follows EU GMP pretty much because yep. that's a, that's everybody is really after that these days yep. for import export purposes. Factor. I would say that given our client base, a lot of the rest of the world is just like surging forward in EU GMP compliance. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I don't, they're not doing it. They're doing it to the level that would be considered a active pharmaceutical ingredient. Okay. And, um, so that kind of leaves the people in the U S which are our clients. Okay. That, mm -hmm. which are have to, they don't really have the FDA knocking on the door at the moment. The restrictions in the state level restrictions and inspections are, um, a, at a much lower level. They're not, they're non-existent. They have, they have food like in terms uh, of like the hemp industry. They have food. Colorado. I, th I think that they regulate theirs as a food, like a food safety. Uh, at right? CBD. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. All right. All right. So if you are, they're regulating it as a food, even though the FDA says it's not a food, they're regulating it that way because that's the apparatus that they have for inspections. Okay. Gotcha. Same thing with Wisconsin, Minnesota. I don't know what they're doing with their inspections. You think about it you have a whole new industry and you have inspectors who don't really have any FDA guidance on right. that. And so they're applying they're just maybe trying what's to in the statutes, figure it okay? Yeah. yeah. Like New York, they, they put GMP style regulations in their statute. Okay. Okay. So people who are going to do cannabis in a recreational setting or in a medical setting yep. in New York are going to have to follow GMP rules. Honestly, they're not, it's not like the full... GMP regulations. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's not like that. Uh, you're not really creating a pharmaceutical API there. You're not because yep. they have like licenses for micro producers. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah, exactly. Okay. They're not, there'd be no way to make any money at it. Okay. So are they just adding that to make it, <clears throat> to have a standard, a solid yeah, standard they're, to they're follow? Trying to, they're trying to standardize it. And yep. then they're, you know, trying to, uh, standardize it to the point where they can, re you know, do some regulations. Yeah. But the fact remains that the rest of the world is way ahead yeah. in terms of of the way they operate according to ICH, EU GMP annexes, and those and GPP protocols, they just are way ahead of us. Yeah. And the US meaning, and which is completely fine, but and that's really good. It really helps us because we're a lot, a lot of our business is overseas, whether right. it's in South America, yeah. Central America. We do a lot in, for example, Mexico, up in Canada. Europe, Asia, you know, don't forget Asia has been popping off lately. It's very, very hot. Okay. Hot market. They're all EU GMP I mean, yeah. pretty much. And they're operating at a much higher standard. Well, level, so. And is that because I feel like that might be because a lot of people in the U S they're selling to the U S market where, right. You don't, it's not rational. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So they're not too worried about they're it. They're not too worried about it. Why, These, why add the cost if it's not required? So eventually though, gentlemen and ladies, it's going to be required. Yep. And there's, um, going to be a series of regulations. We don't really know when it is. For those of you who want to catch up at that time, that's fine. But when those regulations come in, the market will be uh, greatly expanded compared yep. to where it is right now because yep. the risk is taken out. Exactly. So the regulation, meaning the rule of, or whatever, what's going to be allowed whatever on regulation the market. It, that they're going to apply is being going to be written that they're going to apply. Then then people are like, oh, that's something I know. Right now, if there's nothing, all there is a bunch of warning letters and actions and you right, know, right. it's not, hey, here's the document that you need, to, here's guidance for you to That comply. you have to follow in right. order yeah, to yeah, yeah, meet those requirements. Right, yeah, that would be really nice. So that would make okay. it easy. So one of the one of the things that you can 
think about doing is going ahead, formulating your operations, making sure that you have the right SOPs, the right quality systems, the right, the right, all, all the right building, right beginning from the building. That's, yeah. that's a big secret that a lot of people don't know. GMP, oh yeah, we're a GMP. And then the building, there's no way that building could be GMP because <laughs> right. it doesn't have the right HVAC. It doesn't have the right, the material corridors aren't there. The personnel yep. corridors aren't there. There, there's no separation, cross contamination yep. issues, all those things so we're going to be going over those in gory detail <laughs> here in the next several weeks. So yep. it's going to be fun, but I thought I'd yeah. touch on some fundamentals first. Sorry. It's almost at nine minutes here and I don't, I think we've just been back in here. <laughs> no, hey, that's all right. Uh, make sure just we so got uh, free resources for you guys. Yes. Um, you yes. know, podcast, uh, product tours, mini courses, guides, and calculators. Those are things that we have there. We're always adding to them. Um, Constantly. Something making, for everybody. Yeah, something for everybody. We try to have it. Go take out one of our mini courses. You will learn something. Guaranteed. We just finished our startup school. Yep, that's going to be getting school, added pretty, uh, pretty yeah, that's soon gonna be here. Good. So if you guys want to take and check out the startup school, we've been adding some things along that. We got a bunch of clients now doing that with us. So yep. it's, it's pretty good. Very um, exciting. Yeah. And if you guys want to throw your uh, hat in the ring for that, don't be afraid to send us a message and we'll see about getting you in there. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, we we sometimes we can take a limited number of clients one on one. Mm -hmm. Well, right. really, what that is, we you know sit down with you and we really do a deep dive into your business plan and everything. It's um, it's honestly, it's a lot of the stuff that's in our podcast. Yeah, but but it's more tailored to your specific application, spe special situation. Yeah, everybody's doing something a little different. Some people are just creating those extracts. We've been pushing a lot of people to go to final product formulation. Right. Yeah, it really just depends right. on what your business model is. Exactly, yeah. You give us a buzz, see what you think. So this is the process for creating APIs, which is pharmaceutical ingredients, okay? Yep. Active pharmaceutical ingredients, that's what yep. that means. And final dosage forms. The final dosage forms are written in the regulations, part 210 and 211 in the U.S. Okay. Okay. And uh, there are annexes that are applicable also, but both the U.S. and the EU go off of ICH guidelines. And I'll tell you what that is. Oh, it's, right. it's harmonized guidelines. Okay. And there are these series of documents. You can get them on the web. They're called, you know, Q, Q1, Q2, 3, Q3, Q4, you know, all this stuff. So, yep. And they're, they're just, they're all the different guidances. And what the U.S. has done is they've taken the, if you want to create an active pharmaceutical, you can do that under a guidance. Yep. And then they regulate in the law, the final dosage form, which okay. kind of makes sense. Yeah. You, know? you don't want people just putting whatever out there. So I, in the EU, it's a little different because they also, they also have regulation. In other words, laws for how the API is made and okay. uh, how it's formed and how it's formed. All right. All right. So they a little bit different there, but they both yeah. accept the Q, all the. ICH guidelines, and I'll go over what some okay. of those are, but you know, take a look at this. This is the inputs. These are all your inputs. Typically, every engineer or chemist or process chemist will look at your process in terms of inputs and outputs. Okay, I have uh, raw materials inputs. I have solvent inputs. I have cleaning materials, lubricants, reagents, all of those things along with the specifications and the accept criteria for all those things. All right. So when you receive them into your facility, you're able to test them versus the specifications and say this meets or does not meet specification. Okay. You guys did that with the ethanol, didn't you? Yeah. When you absolutely. randomly tested that ethanol. No, that absolutely. Guys... Yeah. So we did that with the ethanol. Yeah. We, that was an example of one, th what, a, <laughs> what a, that's a really good, that's a really good point. I forgot about that. Yeah. So we <laughs> had that you, everybody who runs ethanol extractors should have this. Okay. And you should be doing metals tests. You should be doing all the contamination, cross contamination. Ethanol mm -hmm. is a great solvent for every type pulling, of small molecule pulling everything of, out of there whether yeah. it's a bad actor uh, or not yeah it's too yeah. good too it's good too of a good yeah, it's too good of a solvent it's really good so what happens is it can get contaminated or it can be in the barrel that it's in it could yep. be contaminated maybe they had paint or something in there yeah mm -hmm. you know, maybe there's a soluble component maybe it's uh, additive or non-additive or sometimes they line the line the line them things like Barrels that so anyway there's some things that you need to think about right yeah okay so we did this with one and we we had the same lot we had three 55 gallon drums of a food grade ethanol and one of them did not pass repeatedly for high levels of arsenic you're kidding and me then the others two from the same exact lot did you wow. know, we were, okay, is this really, do we really need to do this every time? So, okay, we see this. <laughs> and then after I saw that, I, I was like, note to self, this is back in, you know, 2016, 2015, sorry. Yep. 
Note to self, that's really important. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. yeah, because what would have happened is we would have used all that ethanol, yep. and then we would have put it into our product with trace soda. amounts, mm -hmm. and then all the product would have failed. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Of course. Okay, so. And the, if you, you didn't know, test it, you wouldn't even know where it came from. You'd yeah, have right, to look exactly. through your process and find point. and see where, right. the, where arsenic came from. Exactly. Because right. you're adding it in post-processing, mm -hmm. you know. So, like, uh, the arsenic's not going to dissolve in the extractor. No. So, you know, the... Uh, you would probably clean it up if you did that, but you wouldn't. We were using it post processing, using it for cleaning, even. You, yeah, you would, right. You would, smearing uh, you know, it around. But everybody uses a little bit. I use the IPA 70% IPA for mm -hmm. surfaces, but when you're right. trying to clean stuff out, sometimes you're using food grade ethanol in there. Right. Anyway. Yeah, running so it through their machine. Inputs. And, and what happens, of course, it, with that second barrel that didn't pass, of course, you put that into quarantine. Yep. All of them go into quarantine mm -hmm. until the tested. QA says, hey, it's they, we gave you the blessing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> These two are good. That Man. one's not good. <laughs> send, send it back. It back. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you guys must have contaminated it when you, when you tested it. We don't believe the testing. Okay, <laughs> so we tested again and... Mm -hmm. And then I didn't believe the testing either, to tell you the truth. I, that had, would be... I had them do them again because they were yeah. from the same lot. It didn't make sense. Yeah. So it must have been a contamination of a particular In the barrel, barrel right. itself. Okay. The, but it doesn't only happen with solvents. It also happens with raw botanical ingredients, obviously. Yeah. Any know. step of that process could yeah. potentially get I mean, you got the pesticides. Yeah. I know that where there's fires, typically you would have ash firefighting, firefighting right. compounds on all oh, that they use to Even actually put out the fire and on the, and it's going to yeah. drift in. So you'll have some sulfur compounds on there and things like that. So that's yeah. something you, you, you need to know because it's a contaminant, right? Yeah. You, mm -hmm. you need to know if it Absolutely. gets through the process. Um, you, you know, so you should have specifications for the incoming materials. That, right. That's the only thing. And they should be written down. They should approve, be approved and they should be under controlled documents. Okay. Yeah. I'm just talking about what your quality system here, essentially. But the How process for creating the inputs, then you go to the API output. The API output is the cannabinoids, isolate, winterized, distillate, whatever you got, right? Yeah, whatever you're Products. using to make yeah, your product. And this can be in CBD, it can be CBC, CBD, <laughs> CBT, <laughs> CBG. <laughs> 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 CBD. <laughs> okay, all right. I was just trying to run them all together. Um, okay, so excipients and blending, then you take those cannabinoids, you, you have different types of outputs. Some of them may have wax in them, some of them may have distillate. A lot of times the, that API output they don't like about that API output is that it's variable and it's, it's important to get that API output as consistent as possible. So if you're using mm -hmm. something with waxes, you want to make yeah. sure it's got that consistent amount of wax yeah. moving forward. You so don't want to question is, you know, how consistent does it need to be? So if you mm -hmm. have a single strain and you grow it in the same way, every time your wax content and your matrix in the background should be the same every time, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you would think. Ideally. You would think, ideally. <laughs> there's stressors, there's environmental stressors, and plants express differently. Oh, and, yeah. You know, things Absolutely. like that. So, the year. Yeah, I guess the question is uh, how much uh, variation is too much? Yeah. And so, botanical products typically have, a, have an allowance for a larger variation of the background mass. When yeah. you extract it, heck, it's got thousands of compounds in there. Right. It's going to vary between mm -hmm. right. each time you empty out that collector. Right. Since yeah, you it's all that about final, consistency. That exactly. final product. Then you take the excipients, which are, what are excipients? Carriers. I think Carriers. that's yeah, what I like think oils, of. oils. Like if then you, there's all, this is where a lot of people want to add variation. Oh, I want to use, I want to use, uh, everybody's got to have the their own extract of a dandelion. Yeah. A dandelion <laughs> or oyster. The, the thistle. <laughs> What'd you say? Oyster. <laughs> oh, 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 man. Oh, man. <laughs> Imagine. Oh, oyster oh, extract. I don't yeah. think so. Oh, I, don't know. I, I think we got to do that now. Yeah, I think we're just going to have to do oh, wait, that. What was the other one? Sea cucumber. <laughs> sea cucumber. Oh, yes, yes. We'll add mm -hmm. sea cucumber together with... Um, <laughs> With the extract of the red poppy thistle. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't oh, think that it's... they would have milk of the poppy as an exit. <laughs> well, that would be the input. That would be up there oh, with the cannabinoids. The and, uh, oh, I yeah, see. I, yeah. yeah, we're not into that business, unfortunately. No, well, no. We're, fortunately or unfortunately, we're not into that business. <laughs> okay, and then excipients and blending. Okay, so you put that together with excipients to make a formulation, mm -hmm. and then that goes into final dosage form. So the formulation then gets uh, put into a final dosage form. Yep. Final dosage form is what? Uh, a capsule, a... Uh, mm, you know, patch yeah um, uh, yeah pa yeah it could be yeah, like a patch or it, it could, could be, be the yeah. isn't uh cbd isolate itself an api <clears throat> or you can yeah. certify it as an api yeah that will that's this see this is the api here but yep. then you are putting it into a formulation and then the final dosage form itself is what are you going to, how are you going to deliver ah, like the I oil, got you, right? Or the tincture or... I suppose the... you could, you I, a, a guy could, you'd want to have it in a, a consistent dosage form. So right. it has mm -hmm. to be in some sort of 
delivery mechanism there. Okay. There always has to be some delivery mechanism. You could theoretically, if it was allowed, and if the variation was allowed, say, hey, here you go. Here's a here's, here's isolate a, just here's right. some powder. Mm-hmm. Chug it down. Press it down mm-hmm. into yep. that'd be like okay. that'd be mm-hmm. like taking like ibuprofen and just giving you a bottle of ibuprofen and saying, hey, here you go. <laughs> you go knock yourself out. Yep. Uh, don't mind us. Uh, yes. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think they you know want to get into a dosage form where it's consistent where you can label it mm-hmm. so that the amount that's in the label is with what's the, in with there the dosage form yeah. yeah and then the packaging happens of course we, there's lots of stuff that go mm-hmm. into packaging mm-hmm. you know, roll away packaging there's the in labels there's professional label writers that you can hire <laughs> yes. you know, because you don't want to get in trouble no. so if that's some the, those are very legal things mislabeling so, guidance and yeah. regulations let's talk about the difference between the two and where how they really apply to that uh, previous scheme we have uh, active pharmaceutical ingredients, API, which I said. The law says you must follow a GMP. The documents are the Q7 guide in the case and who enforces. It's applicable in the U.S., EU, and ICH would be the rest of the world. Okay, so that's the guide. The finished goods, you can see the difference between the API and the document, the Q7 guide, and then the finished goods, you can see there's a 21 CFR 210, 211. Yeah. So those are different. Here. That's the law. Right. right? The yeah. guide is the guide. There's a difference between a guide and a law. Yes. Yep. Okay. The guide will help you follow the law, but it doesn't right, necessarily. Right. right exactly. It's all up to interpretation. So there's, that's why there's good manufacturing practices. There's fairly broad statements like materials touching the API shall not be additive. Okay, that's yeah. a very broad statement that, is it additive? It depends. Um, Being used. Is your, what is your API? Your API could dissolve whatever it is that it's touching. Okay. And you be part of the process. As a part of a process. Mm-hmm. So these are the things that we're going to talk about in detail. Okay, so yeah. finished goods. Is it a law must follow GMP? And you got 21 CFR, uh, 210, 211. It's enforced by the US FDA. We're going to c- kind of focus in on the FDA a little bit because I know that a lot of our U.S. uh, customers are very interested in this. Uh, Excipients, there is a group, IPEC, that puts out an excipients guide and it's really good. And if you don't have it, you should get it. And then also GMP also are applicable to excipients. And then solvents reuse, there's the USP guide and there's FDA guidance on solvents and reuse. So those are some things that you can look up. Um, and yep. we have talked about those ad nauseum yep. in our previous, in our previous uh, podcast. So the GMP development process, let's talk about that. We got, right. we're going to define the intended patient use. Okay. This is extremely important because this is like your goalpost. This is like everything that you do in terms of how you create your process, mm-hmm. what you're going to be producing. All that stuff is all going back to intended patient use. Okay. It it drives so many different things like, Mm -hmm. okay, we're going to, the intended patient use is, is, is they're going to use the final dosage form and they're going to take a pill bottle and it's going to be consistent from, from pill to pill, from bottle to bottle for the rest of their lives. Okay. And it's not going to degrade or anything. Mm -hmm. And it's going to have a certain level of minimum expectations on contaminations and quality. All right. So that's the intended patient use. And. And you get into the point when you go through a GMP process of defining that for each one of your products. Okay. Yeah. But what a lot of people don't understand is that you really have to understand the chemical specifications of the API as a part of this process. Okay. All right. And this is really what a lot of people are struggling with right now around the world Mm -hmm. because you need all the chemical specifications from the API so that you can start your clinical trials. So you can start your various double blind studies or whatever. Validating the efficacy of your product, basically. And their specifications. Now, the U.S., we have a whole list of compendia and also uh, pharmacopoeia, like our herbal pharmacopoeia, for example, where they they put specifications, potency, purity, identity, metals, all this stuff, right? Yeah. But there's way more specifications than that. You you would probably want to know, okay, like the the viscosity of the the formulation, for example, color color clarity. You want to have what the signal is. Oh, we're going deep on it. Yeah. yeah, Oh yeah. Super deep. So the dossier for the chemical specification and the, typically a CRO or a contract research organization mm-hmm. would have all the measurements. They would sit down, they'd look at what was out there before, they'd look at what the intended patient use is of your dosage form, and then they would create, make sure that the specifications that either you had already mm-hmm. or that didn't, that you didn't have, you, you would get those done. Yeah. So that you could talk about them in your dossier. All right. Yeah. Which then you would submit as a, a new drug application or something along yep. those lines. To so, get your approval. Yep. 
Yeah, so that's the chemical specifications of the API. And it's very important because if you don't understand like acid-base chemistry of what can I do with this? What can't I do with right, this? Right. Is it going to degrade? Is it not going to degrade? How you made it is going to depend right, on how right. stable it's going to be. We can get rid of all your THC, just stick it in a pot and, and warm it up. <laughs> warm it up and <laughs> put a flashlight on it. And a little yeah. bit of UV light on there. It's got a little <laughs> reactor pot. We got a primordial soup. Exactly. We Let it sit for a little, couple days and I think that we bam. did that and that's what happened with that little creature that we got in walking around in the lab. <laughs> in really the droid got, room? That's right. We were trying to do the conversion and we added in some uv and we added in some you know high energy <laughs> that was required for the activation yeah um, we did definitely didn't expect that we added an over under <laughs> oscillator duplicator on it which we can provide if you which, guys need yeah if you guys need that so, <laughs> so if you haven't seen it you got to check it out we had an unknown invasion of a creature in our drain dread room we don't know what happened but we think it came from our our UV reactor. Yep. Yeah. We're going to have to do some, uh, some yeah. more testing to try to recreate that again. Yeah, exactly. And we found a unhuman signature in the mass spectrometry that <laughs> yeah. we did on it. Yeah. <laughs> Unidentified. <laughs> Dissolved object. <laughs> UDO. <laughs> it was, it I was, love it. It was crazy. <laughs> it was, it, yeah, it was like nothing. That was it. wild. What can I, I say? In the world's a serious. mysterious it's very place. serious. We shouldn't laugh no. about this. <laughs> no, no. The world is a day. <laughs> okay. Mysterious. All right. Understand the process uh, <laughs> or process if you are in the U.S. Okay. So understand the process. You, you have to have people who are subject matter experts, SMEs. That's us. Okay. Mm -hmm. we, you call us. You call our sales guys even. Yeah. Uh, for sure. In fact, they know the process very well. They've been trained on it. They know all the ins and outs. They know the yields. They know yeah. what else. They, what else do you know? You got to. Like, oh, how much it's going to cost? How much uh, it's going to cost? Oh. Yeah. What you know? labor projected forecasts for products, and we can help figure it all out. Yeah, understanding the process is really important. How the equipment interacts with that. What the how the analytical act interacts with that. Yeah. Where when you would <clears throat> it would make sense to put an analytical lab in your location versus an external laboratory? Just yeah. These are the types of things that we we talk to people all day. Everybody's situation is different. Yeah. yeah. So exactly. it, it, we love that kind of stuff, figuring out what you guys are trying to do, your end goal, and then us had guiding a, we, you okay, there. So we had a guy yesterday we were talking to, and he's like, oh, yeah, we want to do an analytical lab. Remember that? Yeah. yeah you and I talked to him together. Oh, was, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Look, I, yeah. So look, it, yeah, that, if, that if, might make sense for you to do that if you have some background in that, right? Yeah. Whatever. Mm -hmm. Or if you are, but that's a competitive market. Or oh, it definitely have, can be. And it's well established. It's well so established, trying to break so, into yeah, that is exactly. going to be. Exactly. You have large conglomerates adding a test to their existing ISO system and, right. and you leveraging their existing equipment versus you starting up from zero. <laughs> exactly. You, know, you can trying do that. You can do mm -hmm. that, but yeah. you have to have a good customer on the line or something like that where you say, okay, I'm going to have this customer and they're going to pay this amount. And then right. I'm also going to talk to myself and then we're going to build up a reputation because we think that this is this better has got than a lot that. of legs on it, yeah. on it and we got the market. So we're going to get in early right now. And we, we think we can win. Okay. That's great. Wonderful. I, I think that's awesome. Yeah. That's, nothing wrong with yeah, that. There's nothing wrong with that. But in some cases it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be pursued. It shouldn't so, be the first thing that they're thinking about right. at now, that maybe, time. Maybe not. Okay. So understanding the process, how do we get off on that? But anyway, <laughs> we, we understand the process. We yep. understand the process. Yeah. We understand what is critical in the process and what's not critical in the process. Right. Depending Depending on which regulations you are going to apply. Yeah. So not every uh, critical process step is critical. So we're going to get into that. So process mm -hmm. chemistry itself, critical process parameters and critical equipment. Yeah. And then there's contamination reviews, internal and external contamination. So these are the critical components. So you think about step one, step two, step three, step four in your, in your process sheet. Mm -hmm. Which ones are critical and which ones are not critical. The right. ones that are critical, you need to control. The ones yep. that are not critical, you can either put in a protected status or a general status. Okay, something right. like that. So you define the levels of control, protection, and validation for every one of those critical components. We're going to be unpacking that over the next uh, several weeks, yep. what that is, what that nearly means for your operation. But just suffice it to say that understanding what is critical and what's not 
it, it really depends on uh, what your operation what is you're planning doing. on doing. What you an analytical what I mean? so lab. It is, it is the same. It's not, it's not like we're pulling down like a plan and saying, pushing copy, print seven <laughs> copies, and here you go. It's not I like wish it was that kind of, easy. No, we have to, no, we have to work. Oh, yeah, We have to work for yes. it. What? Yes. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> okay, defining critical is critical. Okay, GMP development product, projects must identify critical process steps. We talked about that. Unit operations process parameters associated with those unit operations, yeah. what the critical equipment is, and also non-critical processes, unit operation steps and equipment. Okay. Right. So it's, a, it's just as important to say, this is non-critical. This is not because, because You're, it will make a huge impact on, on your entire operation. Yeah. It, it'll make an impact on your building. Yeah. If it'll you make an impact on your HVAC system. That's why people say you really got to start with a facility if you want to do GMP. Yeah, absolutely. Right? And that you got to have this information ahead of time. And because yeah. guess what? You get in there, like, you're like, oh, okay, well, you're going to create all that after the fact, after you have all your HVAC in there and it's not <laughs> compliant and you don't have, yeah. you don't have any, everything hooked up and it's wasting you know, time working. and money. Yeah, 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 no, no, it's just not going to work. Yeah. yeah. So you could gut everything, put all new HVAC in, put all new flooring in, new, no, new walls, put in different stuff. You know, people do that. They're like, okay, I got a, I got a trailer. I'm going to stick the trailer <laughs> in the back because somebody told me it's GMP and I'm going to, yeah, <laughs> it's like I, I've heard everything. Like, it's no big deal. I got this taken care of because you know? <laughs> we painted the walls with epoxy on the inside. So it looks white and we put an led. So everything's glowing. It must be GMP. It, right, okay. It's not right. quite that way, guys. No, okay. no, there's a lot. So more the, to it. the critical process steps, we've gone over what the process looks like in hemp and processing and what the unit operations are. That's like, Okay, operate operation one, operation two. We're going to we're going to do the reactor first. Then mm. we're going to do the filtration, and then we're going to do the washing and cleaning. And yeah. so, which ones of those parts of those processes are, are important? And then, mm. what are the equipment that you're using in that process? What does that look like? And is it critical or not? And then the process parameters are very simple, like uh, it's temperature, pressure, pH, or it's maybe there's specific critical things that you need to control in your in your equipment. Yeah. Whether, well, yeah, like you said, the pressures, temperatures, yeah. those all, all factors into the end product. Like, exactly. If there's variables amongst that. Exactly. Yeah. So, and then it, it, anything that touches the API is considered critical. Okay. What's in scope and what's out of scope? Okay. Let me see here. Out of scope, non-contact items, process water for power switch gear, things like that. That's out of scope. In scope is power switch gear or in scope would be equipment, piping, inst instrumentation, rooms, environment, SOPs. Some just some general thoughts there that the non-contact items, process water for cooling, things that don't contact the so the water for the cooling, but the actual pipes that may do the cooling, if it's coming in contact with the extracts, that yeah, would so be an Yeah, so if, if you washed your extract with water wash, mm -hmm. okay, and you did that as a part of your process, then that would be a contact. Your yeah. water pro your in water scope. system then would yeah. be, right? In, part in of scope. That, yeah. But if you were using your water system as a cooler, a coolant, mm -hmm. and it never contacted nor had any possibility of contacting, then it would be out of scope, right? Yeah. It's not, meaning it would be what we call non-critical. Yep. Not, not coming in contact right. with that API. And then equipment, piping, instrumentation, rooms, environment, SOPs, those are all in scope if, if they're touching the equipment. So if you have anything or touching the API yep. of any kind of, and then usually also the instrumentation is also in any, what they call PAT or process analytical technology or process mm -hmm. analytical testing. Yep. Okay. PAT, anything that you use to measure a process parameter or you anything that's used to uh, that really touches that api is considered to be in scope so it's considered makes, to be critical that makes sense yeah i don't want any you know yeah cockroaches or anything running across my api that would be uh yeah exactly you got that on in scope yeah i mean <laughs> and so what that does is that puts that pr that processing equipment it puts it under uh certain gmp regulations okay and we can talk to you a little bit about what those regulations are but As we um, you know, fundamentally uh, the equipment needs to do what it says it's going to do in a consistent sort of way, control the process uh, parameter that's the most critical, yep. and then not be additive to the process, not contaminate it. So that, that's what it is. Yeah. And that includes all the inputs too. If you're going to use 
ethanol and you're going to use it again and again, again <laughs> until it's until it's got it's janky tainted are you going to you know continue to do that no of course the fda is to say hey you have to have a validated method by which you would limit the number of uses you have to state right. what the uses are how yes. many times you're going to use it so wow you mean i, I can't use this forever <laughs> and, and no uh, it's bad so it gets all oh, full of stuff so man. that's uh kind of an overview gentlemen yeah. and ladies on the gmp it's a very broad overview we're going to be going into some very specifics here in the next several weeks on each of these topics bring it bring you right through the process um do some process chemistry oh we're going to do some process engineering uh, right. right here on this show so stay <laughs> tuned yeah and uh, really be... appreciate you being here yeah uh, we're going to be going over let's see we're going to be going over risk assessments yep risk assessments uh, system classifications yep i know you brought up the urs yeah we're going to be doing all that stuff it's going to be good it sounds stuff. mundane but it's very important stuff that you're going to want to know if you plan on taking your business to the next level yeah exactly it's coming it's coming guys yep. so it's just a matter um, of just time. stay tuned and yep. yeah we have a lot of resources there to help get you there sooner you don't want to wait until it's been implemented and it's hey you guys have to do this you don't have to be gmp certified to start working towards GMP. Yeah. It's right. just going to make it easier in the long or run. Or at so. least maybe you'll understand what the gaps are, you know, right, right up in front. So exactly. you say, okay, look, what I'm doing now is great, but if this regulation comes down, I'm going to have to do this and this, and it's going to cost me this amount. So, so hey, options. thanks for joining us, and you guys take care, and yeah, we'll see you next time. See you next week. All right. Uh, bam.